Good morning, everyone. My name is Siobhan Porter, and I'm the director for the Office of Violent Crime Prevention here at the City of Columbia. At this time, I would like to welcome each and every one of you that's here today for the City of Columbia's Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month press conference. Standing beside me on both sides are our, of course, law enforcement partners, in addition to our community partners, who all daily work very hard to ensure that we are combating dating and intimate partner violence, promoting healthy relationships, in addition to providing services to equip survivors with the resources and care that they deserve. As a city, it's very important for us to ensure that we're bringing awareness to teen dating violence. Not just today, but throughout the year. As we talk about teen dating violence this month, we want to let everybody know that we are aware that it doesn't just affect teenagers. So raising priority, raising awareness, excuse me, is a top priority for all of us, all of us standing up here, all of us here at the City of Columbia, especially our City Council members, our Mayor Daniel Rickman, our City Council, also our City Manager, Ms. Teresa Wilson. I believe I see for everyone here this morning when I say this community should all come together because we all care. We care about dating violence. We care about our teenagers. But it's not enough for us to simply stand here and say we're talking about raising awareness. We've got to continuously advocate, educate, and promote healthy relationships. February is the month designated where we celebrate love, right? When we talk about Valentine's Day or just in general. But February is also the month of awareness of healthy relationships. So this year, the City of Columbia, Office of Violent Crime Prevention, is looking to bring awareness on healthy relationships to highlight Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month, not only through this press conference, but also by partnering with community organizations to host community-based events throughout this month of February and throughout the rest of this year. The goal of Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month is to share details about the public health crisis that is violence among teen relationships but also to promote healthy relationships among our youth. When we look at national statistics, the Administration on Children, Youth and Families, Family and Youth Services Bureau, a division of the United States Department of Health and Human Services, shows data that one in three teens in the United States will experience physical, sexual, or emotional abuse from someone that they're in a relationship with prior to becoming an adult. Those are staggering statistics. That's echoed in South Carolina. The Department of Health and Environmental Control, or DHEC, backed those national statistics by also saying one in three relationships in South Carolina are characterized as unhealthy or violent. And that's amongst our teenagers. DHEC also mentioned that those who experience teen dating violence suffer both short and long-term impacts, lasting impacts. Those damaging impacts are shown through behavioral health issues, including suicide attempts, eating disorders, and drug misuse. So what's most concerning is that we talk about those youth who experience teen dating violence. They will grow up to become adults. And those same violent tendencies that we see exhibited, whether they are the one who experiences teen dating violence, or whether the person that's doing teen dating violence, is that they will exhibit it in other places, whether it's school or college, in a family home or in a community setting. And they will either be the person that, again, will be either the abuser or the offender, or they will be someone who experiences it. So this issue is not just isolated to the city of Columbia. It's not isolated to the state of South Carolina. It's a national issue, and that's why we're here today to bring awareness and highlight this troubling public health crisis. So, so much of 
Today is about awareness of the month to address safety and well-being of our teenagers. In a proclamation signed by President Joe Biden on January 1st, 2024, he called upon everyone to educate themselves and others about teen dating violence so that together, together, we can all stop it. President Biden also asked that we come together to end teen dating violence to ensure that teens feel safe, protected, and empowered to live lives free from violence and full of dignity and respect. So while Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month is highlighted in February, make no mistake, this is a year-long advocacy effort, and we are committed to not only keeping this in the forefront, but also making sure that we combat this issue daily as we move forward. From day one on this job, I stood here and I said that together we are going to reduce violent crime in the city of Columbia. Not just with one form of violence, but all forms of violence. And as we've continued along the path, we are working together with community organizations, with community partners, with city departments, with community members and stakeholders to address different forms of violence in our communities. So this morning, We've got some experts in the field and some passionate uh, advocates. So you'll hear from them. They'll talk about what they do on a daily basis to educate, to advocate, and to promote healthy relationships. But also they'll talk about how they provide services for survivors. Notice I've not used the word victim one time. Survivors, survivorship, okay? So thanks. Chief Holbrook for being here from the law enforcement perspective. We know that that partnership is so important when it comes to law enforcement and just being able to put to report incidents of violence to law enforcement at our Columbia Police Department. So we will hear starting out with Tierra Mack from Hush No More. Then we will hear from Rebecca Lord at Pathways to Healing. Then Dr. Juanita McDonald will come and grace us from Rediscover Me. Before Leah Wisovitz from Sister Care comes up, and last and not least, we will hear from Roger Acton from the South Carolina Victims Assistant Network, who will tell us about works that they do, but also about the upcoming Leap of Love event. Following their remarks, I will come back and give closing remarks. Good morning, Mayor Eisen. My name is Tierra Mack. I am here representing Hush No More. With Hush No More, we support survivors, survivors in need of the Hush topics, the things that are hard to talk about, the things that no one wants to talk about, such as child sexual assault, sexual abuse, incest, domestic violence, and all those horrible things that it's really hard for people to be able to get through on their own. With this event, The Leap of Love, I think it's really, really important because a lot of children don't really know what domestic violence looks like. They don't know what the violence looks like. They don't know what toxic relationships are. And with social media and the internet, it's so misconstrued about what healthy should look like and what's necessary for you to be able to have healthy, loving relationships, not only with your family, but also with your partners. A lot of times it is generational and it's passed down, so no one really knows where or how to actually get the support that they need. And that's most importantly, knowing where to get the support, how to get the support. A lot of them don't know that we are here. Hush No More is here to support you. Not only do we host retreats and things for the victims and the survivors, as well as the families, we also have a holistic wellness center where we give them a safe space to be able to come heal and find some, some clarity in what it is that they've been experiencing. I believe that a lot of parents also don't know that their children are even sexually active or dealing with victim, with being victims or survivors of domestic violence. They have no idea that it's going on. Um, they hide it from them very well. So this event will really bring a lot to the forefront. Not only will it empower the children, but it will also empower the parents and let them know, hey, this is what to look for. This is what you need to, to look at. This is what we need to be able to see. Are there friends, making sure that they are always on them, they, they have free time for themselves, things like that that we really need to really tap into and make sure that we are aware of. Um, last but not least, I really want to say that knowing the resources that are available, everyone up here is a wonderful resource as far as domestic violence, assault, or anything that they may experience, so we want them to know that we are here, we are here in all different varieties and we're here to support them any way that they need. 
And thank you, anyone who comes out, we definitely look forward to empowering the parents, the children, and the family as a whole, because it's really important. Good morning, everybody. I'm Rebecca Lori, the Executive Director of Pathways to Healing, uh, formerly Sexual Trauma Services of the Midlands. So what we do is we're a rape crisis center, and we provide supportive services for survivors of sexual assault, and not just the survivors, but their loved ones. Because what we know about violence, um, whether it's teen dating violence, whether it's sexual violence, or whether it's um, domestic violence, it impacts the entire community the entire family unit. So we provide lots of supportive services to those folks who are struggling. Um, we have a 24-hour crisis hotline where we're available to provide emotional support. We also provide hospital accompaniments for people going to the hospital for a forensic medical exam after a sexual assault. So we literally hold people's hands through this process. This is often very difficult. Uh, the, the, probably the worst time of their lives where they're to hold their hands through that process. But on the flip side of that, you know, we're, we're reactive in that way, but I love that we are proactive because, just like Jervon said, we need to educate. We need to make people aware of this subject. We need to talk about it. It's difficult to talk about. People don't want to talk about it. But we are in the schools um, every day talking to kids about healthy relationships, talks uh, what a toxic relationship is, because what we know is that if you grow up in a dysfunctional environment, that's the norm for you. So you don't really understand the dynamics of, of domestic violence or any type of violence. So we're, we're in schools every day talking with kids and teachers about just the dynamics of violence. We also know that um, intimate partner violence is closely related to sexual violence. And you'll hear from Leah um, with sister care, and she'll talk a lot about that interpersonal violence, that intimate partner violence. There's so much overlap because what we see is people who are in those violent relationships, they are often being sexually assaulted too, and they might not realize it. So it's all about education, it's all about awareness. And it's all about um, coming together. I think I can't wait five or six times we said together, together, together. We have to work together to really make progress and to have these conversations. We are honored to be a part of this event. Um, Leave a love. We invite everybody to come out. It's going to be great for kids and parents. It's all about coming together as a community and doing something positive and ending violence all together. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Juanita Britt McDonald with Rediscover New Women Initiative, and our mission is to engage, educate, and improve the lives of survivors impacted by abuse, trauma, and mental health. Our organization takes a little bit of a different approach because our entry into supporting survivors centers on neuroscience and behavior of the abuse that they endure. And what you'll find with our organization is that we, uh, we actually go out and support faith-based communities, we support local community organizations, and we empower the whole. I heard Mr. Fordham share that the awareness is not just for the youth. You see, our, our concept and the things that we've done in the past and presently centers on empowering the whole. We have to start with our head, we have to start with our parents. We need to be able to bring those in. And so through our training, especially those that I work with in the faith-based community, we have annual trainings. And so the core factors that we have been able to implement inside of our youth, it helps them in times such as this, such as the escalation of uh, the love bug that's gonna uh, tackle each of them. And, parents that are in this fuzzy way of trying to figure out, okay, how do I calm that? Mm. What better way to do it than to educate yourself? This upcoming event is going to be a way for parents and youth to be able to come out, to be, to connect with so many different forms of resources within the, uh, our city, Columbia, as what has been shared, as well as be able to look at what do I do in times such as this? How do I communicate with my youth? What does all of this mean to me? Because what I can tell you is this, over the years, everything that I have learned is that parents just don't know. I was one of them. 
So if I did not know, that means lots of us did not know. And so this event is going to help each of us. Our organization supports so many different factors of the community as well as working with each of these organizations. And we are honored to be a part of SC Band and the City of Columbia Legal of Love. And I look forward to meeting each and every individual that comes out. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Leah Weisevich. I'm the Executive Director of Sister Care. Uh, our mission at Sister Care is to reduce the impact and occurrence of domestic violence in the Midlands. We provide a great array of services for survivors of domestic violence and their children. Um, we do have a 24-7 crisis line. Um, and we have many other services like shelter, housing, legal services, a clinical uh, department, and of course, all of those are provided free of charge. Um, we serve around 4,000 survivors and their children each year in the Midlands. We also have a, a teen prevention program, which uh, I wanted to speak about today on uh, my Teen Domestic Violence uh, Awareness Month. So, to paint the picture for you, 42% of South Carolina women will experience domestic violence in their lifetime. Mm. One in 10 children will witness physical violence in their home. That doesn't account for children that hear um, unhealthy behaviors, that is one in 10 witness physical violence in their homes. And so what happens is that behavior is normalized. And uh, statistics show that little girls that grow up in homes uh, like that have a greater chance of becoming victimized and little boys have a greater chance of becoming abusers. And what we're seeing is one in three teens, right? One in three teens experience some form of abuse, whether it's physical, emotional, um, they're experiencing uh, that abuse. So what do we do? We have to work to prevent that intergenerational cycle of violence. And that's why the programs that we have in schools or with faith-based communities or with youth civic groups are so important. We need to get to these teens. They need to hear what healthy relationships look like. A lot of times when behavior is normalized, um, they just don't know. And sometimes we hear, I, I just want to be loved. I want to be loved. I don't feel that in my own. And we need to teach them that love is respect. Love is not unhealthy. It's not violent. Uh, texting your girlfriend or boyfriend 876 times a day is not love. Putting a GPS tracking device on your girlfriend or boyfriend's car is not love. Showing up at 2 in the morning on their front steps and being able to know uh, if they're home is not love. And so it takes all of us working together as a community to educate our teens and our parents about what healthy relationships look like. And so Sister Care, we, we served around 2,500 teens with our prevention program in 2023. That seems like a big number, but it's not. We can't do it alone. None of us can do it alone. And so we have to work together and we have to work with the city to make sure that we make a safer and healthier environment for our teams. I have a three-year-old daughter. I'm doing this for her. I'm doing this for your children and grandchildren and for the future. And so um, I'm very excited for the Sleep of Love event for all of us to come together as a community to show what it means to support our teams, to know that they're not alone, that they have so many resources and so many people who care, even if they don't always feel that way at home. So I hope to see everybody at the Leap of Love event tomorrow. That's going to be- Thursday. Oh, excuse me. It's Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow's going to be on Thursday at 5.30. It's going to be an exceptional event. And um, I'm excited to, uh, to spread the word about healthy relationships. Good morning. You've had a lot of good mornings, and we're excited to be here. I'm Roger Acton with the South Carolina Victim Assistance Network. Um, my heart has grown many times uh, with this opportunity to work together on this. Uh, I represent also my executive director, Laura Hudson and Jessica Goodwin, who is my coastal me, as she says, uh, working with faith-based victim service work. Uh, just a couple key comments about South Crime Victim Assistance Network. Uh, we want to be the voice for crime victims. 
victims and survivors. We want to be there also for those who serve them, our advocates. Uh, we are that go-to network for them. Uh, and in fact, it's interesting, just to give you a perspective, my one area is called Faith-Based Victim Service Area. But we have also Financial Relief for Victims Program, the Crime Victim Information Service System, our legal assistance is out there, forensic nurse examiners, you've probably heard about the SAFE program, uh, and then of course is the faith-based strategy. Uh, it's a collective effort. Uh, we cover, as, as Trevon noted, all different aspects of crime impacting our community. Uh, and it's exciting to tell you that since Ronald Reagan saw a priority for compensation for crime victims, and now in the 1980s, we had opportunity to establish ourselves out of a bill of rights for crime victims. Is that not impressive? To have a bill of rights for crime victims in South Carolina is very distinctive in our country. And uh, we have been established to help make sure those bill of rights are continually followed. And in the work now with this faith-based strategy, uh, we've been able to come alongside houses of worship, all faiths, uh, very humbling in all aspects of our faith support. Uh, and out of this project, we're working with various areas, even in our faith base, of working with elder abuse, uh, traffic, human trafficking. Uh, a couple years ago, we saw a strategy for teen dating violence that really needed to be addressed. And as Leah just noted, uh, I also come out of a heart for two children now who are in their 20s, two daughters who I wanted to make sure, again, there's a safe element. But what is that safe element? How do we do this? Just to let you know, there's a whole bunch of people working every day on this. So this is, again, not just this one month of awareness, which allows us to put on Yes Orange. Some Clemson people are very happy. All my Gamecocks are stressing <laughs> to have to wear orange. Um, but at least one night they told me they're going to put on some orange for me on Thursday. But this priority is something that really meshes well. In fact, they have been working hard. And I look at this Thursday night coming up as a way to celebrate all this good work in our community. A chance for us, as everyone has noted, parents and high school teens to come together and hear and see. And believe it or not, there will be someone who will come in there for the first time and learn about this issue. And we don't want to just scare them, because I know the statistics say like one in three teens all experience physical, sexual, and emotional abuse from someone they've had in a relationship before they become an adult. And shoot, down the road, I'm hoping we get to work with campus students and in the colleges, because I didn't realize this, but 43% of our US college women report experiencing violent or abusive dating behaviors. Um, we're behind no matter how much we work hard, but we work smarter working together. And that's what's changing. So this event on Thursday night is going to start at 5.30. Um, from 5.30 to 9.30, it's going to be at Brooklyn Baptist Church. I want to thank, um, I definitely want to thank the folks from the Vibe Youth Ministry and uh, Young Adult Ministry, um, Carmen and Dallas. Uh, they are deacon and deaconess there. They have provided complete coverage for us to use the conference center there, and it is fantastic for them to give us that opportunity, not to worry about that cost, and give us this beautiful facility at the conference center for Brooklyn Baptist Church. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, and again, each one of these members here have been working hard on all the aspects of giveaways. We're going to have giveaways throughout the night. Uh, they'll get, get a chance to go through an exhibit area from 5.30 to 6.30, meet all the folks here. In fact, i got to read this list. And I, and I appreciate your listening to this. But we have multiple uh, partners. Um, our partners include Hush and Moore, they're here, uh, Hardy Hands Foundation, Pathways of Healing, Sister Care, The Hive, Skidbasa, City of Columbia Mayor's Office. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Trayvon. Uh, City of uh, Columbia Commission on Minority Affairs, Misconception, uh, Young Life, Interfaith uh, Partners of South Carolina, Richmond County Sheriff's Office, and the Columbia Police Department. And again, there's probably a couple others I'm not remembering, but it is amazing when you start to say, there's a need, can you help? And I feel like the Huckberry moment where all these folks want to come alongside and do something to make a difference. I feel like there's this unique opportunity that the city gets to see us working together. But I gotta kind of get to let you know, it's always under, you don't know this, but we're already always working together. Uh, that's what, what's so joyful about this day is we're getting to put a spotlight on some amazing people who have a heart for you. Uh, again, this event will finish up at 9th We're going to have two parts I want to emphasize, and I'll finish up with this. The youth will actually have a time using applied drama to experience the understanding of what this is, is about Teen Day Miles. We have Rosalind Stover from the Lee Fairfield uh, Children's Advocacy Center, who is a specialist in this. We also are going to have a panel for the parents that night at the same time for about an hour and a half both, and they're going to get a chance to get to go through and understand better the crisis and also the hope. We don't ever want to just give crisis. We always want to give hope. And that's another part about this great work. So we'll enjoy the night, um, a good fun night. We've got a DJ going to be there in the beginning. I can't wait. Uh, I hope you as a family, if you're looking at this and listening to this story, take the time to send your high school team, 
and you as a parent, please come. This is a message that you need to hear. It gives you hope. This isn't just a stressful conversation. This is a very helpful time together. And thank you, team. I'm, there's a, so much work behind this, and keep, your, keep us in our thoughts and prayers as we move forward to this night and also to this year of celebrating and caring for teens. Wow, when we talk about community partnership, this is what it's all about. Again, we consistently do this work every day, and sometimes it goes unnoticed. But to come together to spotlight all of the efforts from all of these agencies, from everyone that's standing up there is representing a different agency, a different piece of the puzzle. This is what it's all about. And we're doing it to make our communities better. So again, behind me is a flyer for the Leap of Love event, and it'll be Thursday, all right? So I want to thank, personally, everybody that's up here. Thank y'all for the collaborations. Uh, thank everybody that's here this morning, um, and for the community that's represented. Again, Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month is an opportunity for us to come together to, if at no other time, say in February, we are going to continue to raise, to raise awareness. But as we know here in the city of Columbia, we will continue to raise awareness every day. Every day. Not only raising awareness, but advocating for teenagers, for their families, for peers, and for everybody in the community. So, I'll say this. Although Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month ends on February 29th, mm. the work that's being done will not end on February 29th. We're already working together to collaborate on some other events outside of February, some other events throughout the year, throughout the summer when our young people are out of school, but also working with those teenagers, but also their parents, so parents as well too, young adults and adults. Um, so for those who may see the press conference later or see this, click on it. We want you to know and understand that there are caring folks who are here. There are organizations that are here. There are resources out there that are here and available for you. You don't have to suffer in silence. So aside from the organizations that are here today, if you or someone that you know is involved in any type of violence, whether it's dating violence or any other type of violence, Please immediately seek help. You can call 911, report it to local law enforcement. Again, you have community partners that are here that you can get in contact with, whether it's Touch No More, uh, whether it's Sister Care, whether it's Tackling the Healing, you can serve me. They're all accessible. Okay? Uh, you can go to the Columbia Police Department's website for a list of resources through their victim services. There are additional resources on the South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control, or DHEC. They still call it that, I think it's clearly what. Long story short, that website has resources as well. There are resources out there to help, to educate, and we will always all be here to advocate. So again, in an effort to continue to raise the bar higher, because that's our goal here at the City of Columbia, to continue to raise the bar, we want to make sure that we not only have these type of press conferences and awareness events, we continue to build on the programming, the activities, and working with our community partners to educate, advocate, and promote healthy, not toxic, not unhealthy, healthy relationships. We owe it to our communities, and we definitely owe it to our children who are our future. So again, thanks to each of you for taking the time for being here this morning, and I look forward to seeing each of you at the Leap of Love Healthy Relationships event on Thursday, February 15th, starting at 5.30 at the Brooklyn Baptist Conference Center. All right. The details are behind me. You can find it on the City of Columbia's website. Again, thank you all for coming out.